In our last videos, we were setting up our hard drive system, making sure we optimized our computer for Pro Tools, and making sure that our controller was set up properly, and that we are going to record to an external hard drive for Pro Tools. Well, one thing I want to do next is I would like to set up the hardware setup. So we go to hardware now, and here we're going to launch our hardware app, and I want to use the Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. So now I open up this app, and this app is better known as the Audio MIDI Setup. Now, I want to select the window. In this case, I want to select the audio devices. So I want to do show. And here we go. We're seeing it right here. I have a built-in mic. I have a built-in output. I have my complete six set up here, which is an audio interface I'm using that comes from native instruments, which is a lot with my machine software. And I also have my Pro Tools aggregate I.O. So here, I prefer to select this this way. I can see what's going in and out here. And right here we have the built-in microphone. Input 2. And here we have the built-in output here. Next, you'll see here, the I.O. set up here, my clock source. The clock source is the syncing source. That means everything will sync properly to my clock source. In this case, I want to use the built-in output as my clock source. And once I do that, you'll see it here, it's using the built-in output. Next, I have a sample rate. This is the sample rate that will be set up for my sessions. I'm going to use 44.1. But the available sample rates can be 48, 88, and 96K. Now, if you select 96K, be aware that it's going to be pretty big files, all right? The higher the sample rate, the more sample it's going to take in a second. So at 44, it's taking 44,000 samples per second. At 96, that's 96 samples per second. Those are bigger files. Now here, this is my built-in microphone. We can see here, channel. And here is the output. As you can see, it's selected down here. As you can see, it, I'm ready to go. So this is how I want to use it. And you can also configure your speakers here if you'd like to. So in this case, I'm pretty much just going to uh, quit this right now. I'm back in Pro Tools. And then I'll press OK here. Now next, I want to set up my playback engine. Here in the playback engine, I'm already set for my Pro Tools aggregate I.O. And here I have my buffer size. Now the buffer size has to deal with how much RAM my computer is going to use in order to process the data and everything else that goes on, including plugins and how many tracks I have. So, if I'm recording vocals, I want to go down to maybe 32 samples. This way, my power will be used for just what's coming in, which will probably be my audio from recording vocals. The reason why I want to use 32 samples, I want to have less latency. I want the computer's RAM power to just process the focus coming in. The difference is that if someone sings, I want them to hear it back as they're singing. If I have higher sample rates here for my buffer size, and I'm using more samples, it takes longer for the computer to process that and process plug-in power and process how many tracks I have. I'm going to keep it simple. So when I'm mixing, I'm going to have the, amount, the maximum amount the amount is here, 1,024 samples. It's going to use all the RAM as I'm mixing with sessions and plugins. I want this. When I'm recording vocals, I want to be 64 or 32. Now, depending on the samples you pick, if I go to 32, I might get a lot of noise. And you'll see here we have this host engine. And this is checked. This will ignore errors during the playback and record process but I might get pops and clicks so when you're down here you will get pops and clicks but if you have a powerful enough system it might work so just test it out make sure it's okay or just do 64 or what's ever best as long as you have low latency and clicking here will also minimize low latency as well in addition we also have dynamic plug-in processing now, there's this new thing with Pro Tools where they have this, it's, I believe it's called AXX, a uh, new plugin system where it's going to add 
more power where it's spread across the entire range of all the plugins. I prefer to have this default set because this way I have no fear of using plugins that I'm going to reduce the power somewhere. When I do use plugins, I will set my buffer size higher. The next option we have here is the video engine. And this is used when I'm using video along with the audio. Let's say I'm doing a music video, I want to sync some video up to a track or a video, a test video I have for a commercial. I'll pull the video in, and so this way Pro Tools knows I'm using video, it'll create a video track for that as well.